Welcome to the Probe Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Matt and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. The presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com probe. And now I'd like to turn things over to our first presenter, Bard College at Simons Rock. Thank you, Matt, and welcome everyone. My name is Amanda Dabrowski. I'm Associate Director of Admission at Bard College at Simons Rock. I'm going to share a presentation, so um, I'm going to share my screen. So here's some fast facts about Bard College at Simons Rock. We are located in a nice um, semi-rural area. As you can see from the picture behind me, it's an overhead picture of our campus. We're in the Western part of Massachusetts, which is um, very outdoorsy. We have small mountains here, um, but we're also in a very um, artsy and cultural area because a lot of people have moved here from cities like Boston and New York. So you have the best of both worlds. And we're about equidistant between Boston is Boston and New York, as you'll see on this map here, um, a, a less than um, three hours from New York and less than two and a half hours from um, Boston. We are a very small school. Um, we have 11 students on average in a class. Um, in total in our school, we have 400 students. You can see some other um, ratings there um, from um, uh, different organizations, and we are actually rated the best small town in America by Smithsonian Magazine. Here are some outcomes about our alumni. So we're Bard College at Simons Rock. We call our students rockers. Um, we have uh, had 10 Fulbright uh, fellows since 2010. We're ranked 14 in the country for the percentage of our students who go on to receive a PhD. Um, uh, almost all of our students go on to graduate school, as you'll see, it's almost 80%. And six of our students are on um, Forbes's 40, I'm sorry, 30 under 30 list of the most creative minds. The most important thing to know about our school is that we're an early college. So a little bit of history about that. We're the oldest early college in the country. We started in 1966. Our founder's name was Elizabeth Blodgett Hall. And she worked at Concord Academy, which is a day and boarding school near Boston, Mass. And some of her students would come back and visit her and, and they told her they felt like there wasn't that much of a difference between the end of high school and the beginning of college. So she had the idea to sort of bridge the two. And we've changed and innovated and grown a lot over the years. But what has um, remained is that we believe that many students are ready for college at a younger age. Um, they're ready academically, they're ready for that challenge, and they're also ready socially and emotionally. So this is a slide about our academic program. So our students are leaving high school after 10th or 11th grade, generally between the ages of 15 and 17. No matter when they uh, are leaving high school, they're entering our school as a first year college student. They have a writing and thinking workshop during the orientation at the first week of school that really prepares them for college level writing. Um, over their first two years, they have a core curriculum because we are a liberal arts school. So students study a little bit of everything because, because we believe that provides students with the best foundation for no matter what they wanna do, they gain skills like critical thinking, analysis, communication, research skills, things like that. So over the first two years, they're taking math, science, um, a cultural perspective, art, world language, um, a writing intensive course, um, and two seminar classes, which are sort of like humanities classes. But the other half of their classes, they're taking whatever they like. And even within that core curriculum, there is some, some choice. Um, you choose what um, science class you take, you choose your art class, you choose your writing intensive class, et cetera. During your sophomore year, you go through a process called moderation where you work with your advisor and some other faculty and staff and you're basically mapping out what your next two years will look like at Simons Rock, what you might wanna study, if you wanna do 
um, an internship, study abroad, that kind of thing. And um, you can change um, your major, we call them concentrations. You can change them later on, but you do need to have something in, in place. Um, and we have over uh, 30 different uh, concentrations for students. At the end of the sophomore year, our students receive an Associate of Arts degree, and then they move into um, what we call our upper college, the later two years. And the junior year, a lot of our students are studying away, studying abroad. We encourage them to do that, to get a different perspective. And that's when they're really, really starting to focus on their um, area or areas of interest. We are affiliated with Bard College in upstate New York. Um, so that allows our students to do a Bard study away or study abroad program or take classes at Bard, et cetera. So they really have the resources of two colleges. During their senior year, um, all of our students do a senior thesis, which is like a graduate level research paper slash project. Um, and it culminates uh, with their bachelor's degree. And because we're affiliated with Bard, um, they actually get two bachelor's degrees, one from us, Bard College at Simons Rock, and one from um, Bard College. Many of our students end up studying more than one thing as well, so that is an option. Um, being in early college, there is a bit more support and supervision, but for the most part, our students um, are having a traditional college experience. So many of our students, I should say most of our students do live on campus in residence halls. Um, we have clubs, both affinity clubs and interest clubs. Um, some examples of clubs include Black Student Union, International Students Club, Poetry Club, um, Dungeons and Dragons, et cetera. Um, we do have athletics, though we're not a big sports school. Um, so we have um, a handful of sports. Um, so it's more for fun, not we're not super competitive. And we have athletics, um, I'm sorry, we have campus events like open oh. open nights, dances, things like that. Um, so typical college experience just with a little bit more support and supervision. Um, I'm running out of time, so just go very quickly. Um, we, most of our students receive financial aid. You are encouraged to apply for a financial aid at the same time as you apply for admission. We have need-based aid and merit-based aid. Most of our students, 80%, receive some amount of financial aid. We have our own application, but we also accept the common application. We require things like recommendations, essays, and interview your transcript. Um, and thank you. Um, and I'll turn it over to um, my colleagues. Great. Thank you very much, Amanda. Uh, next up is the University of Kentucky. Okay, great. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's session. My name is Christina Lopez, and I'm just going to jump right into talking about the University of Kentucky. So the University of Kentucky is a large public flagship university. We're located in Lexington, Kentucky, which is the second largest city of the state, also known as the horse capital of the world. In addition to being a flagship and a public, we are also a research one institution, which means that we're recognized for engaging in the highest level of research. We are also one of the top 10% of public institutions for research expenditures as well. Now, we are on the larger end, like I mentioned, we have 23,000 undergraduate students representing all 50 states and over 150 countries. And then here are some other fast facts. So I do want to mention that, yes, we are a large institution, but we're very intentional about creating spaces both in and outside the classroom that fosters relationships not only with your classmates and your peers that you'll be spending your four years with, but also faculty and staff as well. So yes, big school, big opportunity, but certainly room for building your community and we're very intentional about that as well. We are also one of eight institutions in the entire country that has a full complement of liberal arts programs, engineering, agriculture, a medical school, a law school, um, pharmacy, dentistry, we have it all, all on one campus. Only seven other institutions in the entire country has that structure on their campus. And that gives you a chance to not only have uh, so many options to choose from, but also a wide variety as well. So having a double major or a minor is not uncommon for our students to participate in. We offer over 200 majors across 16 different colleges. And you can see, like I mentioned before, yes, we're a big school, but look how small our class sizes come out to. 
By the time a student at UK reaches their senior year, about 90% of our students at that point will have participated in internships, research, and or study abroad across 400 different partnership programs in 70 different countries. This is a reminder, we are test optional and we currently, so if you're a senior right now, that's gonna be standing for you, but also we are committed to being test optional through 2024. With the admissions process, we try to make this as easy as possible for our students. We have two different ways of applying. You can choose whatever is easier for you, either the common application or our own UK application. You pick whatever is best for you. You can see what our requirements are in terms of what we need in order to make a decision, just the application, the fee, your high school transcripts, and being test optional. Again, you are welcome to submit your test scores, but you also don't have to if you wouldn't like to either. And our, our uh, approach for looking at our applications is very holistic. So it's not just one thing, things you do inside and outside the classroom are just as important. And December one is our application scholarship and honors college deadline. Scholarships, we offer merit-based, of course, FAFSA is really important. We also offer competitive scholarships as well as diversity scholarships too. The key is just applying by December one. I always say now is the best time to be at UK for multiple reasons. Uh, first, we've invested $2.5 billion in campus transformation over the last decade. So you are coming to UK at a time where we finished really big projects on campus with the new campus structures, and now you're able to enjoy all the newness that we have. That also includes 14 new resident halls. We are very much a residential campus. All of our beds come with Tempur-Pedic mattresses, apartment style, and it's all on campus. And we offer over 550 student organizations, so a little bit of everything to jump into, as well as 30 plus dining locations. You all may know this, but as a little reminder, we are so proud to be in the SEC. Um, I'm sure you all know the big buzz right now is our football team. We are, for the first time in a very long time, we are 6-0, so we're really excited about that. Being in the SEC and having this big athletic presence on campus is just the cherry on top to the UK experience. Lots of high energy. This is where the campus community really comes together and has that high school spirit. So we have 22 Division I SEC athletics on our campus, which really adds to the college experience. Finally, our location is really key to the UK experience as well, which is attracting a lot of students from in-state and out-of-state. Lexington, like I said before, is the second largest city. So you have this great, wonderful, diverse, active city life, brunch, concerts, shopping, over 100 local restaurants, but we also have farms and horse racing and hiking and kayaking. So the campus and Lexington are right beside one another, literally right outside of campus, you are in the second largest city, which is a great opportunity to also engage with that in your college experience. I certainly want to invite you to visit campus. I know I gave you kind of the fast facts about UK, but I would love for you to visit campus both virtually or in person. We also have open house events as well. Just go to that link and you'll be able to um, register for all of those events. And then finally, here's my contact information. So if you have any questions about UK, whether it's related to um, coming to campus or majors or anything, I'm here to support you. So Hopefully you enjoyed this little sneak peek and go cats. Excellent, thanks very much. Uh, next up is Georgia State University. All right, thank you, Matt. All right, and thank all of you for being here this evening. My name is Peter Vleck here on behalf of Georgia State. Georgia State University is the largest university in Georgia with over 50,000 students across our six campuses. We have about 30,000 students at our main campus in downtown Atlanta, and the rest are spread over our five perimeter college campuses, which are spread around the Atlanta metropolitan area. Despite the size, we maintain a student to faculty ratio of about 25 to one, so you're still gonna have the opportunity for more intimate learning experiences where you can interact directly with your professors, especially once you get into those upper division courses. We are the most diverse university in Georgia, and we are proud to serve students from each county in the state, each state in the US, and over 170 different countries around the world. We are recently ranked number one out of all public universities in the country for the quality of our undergraduate teaching. So no matter what you end up choosing to pursue here, you know that you're going to get a great education. 
We were also ranked number three on the list of the most innovative universities in the country because we're constantly looking for new ways to support our students and make sure that you're able to achieve your goals both during your time at Georgia State and after you graduate and start your career. Additionally, we are ranked number six in the country for first year student experiences. This is really important because for most students, that first year that you're in college is gonna represent one of the single biggest periods of change that you're going to go through. You're probably gonna have a lot more independence, a lot less structure, and you're really gonna have agency over choosing your own academic pathway for the first time. Because of all these changes, we think it's really imp important to support our students and to make sure that your first year is a good one. As a tier one research university, Georgia State students are able to begin participating in research as early as their freshman year on campus. This provides interested students with amazing opportunities for academic and career development. Also, we have a great variety of research programs, so it's not just limited to the STEM majors that you might traditionally associate with research. Comprised of 11 different schools and colleges, Georgia State offers more than 250 different degree granting programs. These range from associates and bachelor's degrees on the undergrad side to a wide selection of graduate programs in more than 100 different fields of study. Some of our standout programs include the College of the Arts, where our students interested in art and media are able to tap into the really vibrant creative culture of Atlanta, especially into the burgeoning film and music industries located here. Another big one is our Robinson College of Business, which is not only a top tier business school, but it feeds many of its graduates into the major companies that make up the Atlanta business community. Additionally, we have our Honors College, which is a competitive and selective program offering students many perks, including priority registration and smaller class sizes. So it ends up being a great mixture of some of the benefits of a small college experience while still having access to the full resources of a major public research university. In addition to our main downtown campus, Georgia State has five more campuses around the Electri Atlanta metropolitan area that make up GSU Perimeter College. The Perimeter College campuses are two-year branches with less stringent admissions requirements, but, they, but at the end of the day, it's all still Georgia State. Perimeter College offers our students a lot more flexibility while still getting that same great number one ranked education. And all this comes at a fraction of the price, with tuition at Perimeter College being about one third of the price of the Atlanta campus, so it's a great way just to save some money in your education. Perimeter College offers associate's degrees and certificate programs, and then an easy pathway, pathway for students to transition to the Atlanta campus to finish off their bachelor's degree. Our location and our resources allow us to offer students most unparalleled opportunities in their education, especially when it comes to networking and opportunities for jobs and internships in the Atlanta area. Due to our location, many students are able to find jobs and internships that they can walk to from our campus or are just a short ride away on public transportation. For students interested in the world at large, we're proud to offer more than 70 different study abroad programs in 45 countries. These range from trips as short as one week up to full semester and year long programs. So hopefully you're able to find something that fits your plans, your interests and your comfort level for international travel. Now let's take a look at the admissions process. The middle 50% of students admitted to the Atlanta campus last year had between a 3.24 and a 3.76 core GPA, alongside either a 1030 to 1220 SAT or a 20 to 26 ACT. Please keep in mind these numbers for the middle 50%. So that means a quarter of students were above this range and a quarter were below. Meanwhile, the average student admitted to the Honors College had a 4.03 core GPA. One thing to note is that at Georgia State, we are looking at your core GPA when it comes to making these admissions decisions. Your core GPA is made up of your English, math, natural science, social science, and foreign language classes. So those are the only things that are coming to, are going to come into play when we are reviewing you for admissions. Because of that, the GPA that we use is probably going to be a little bit different than what's displayed on your test score. Um, another thing to keep in note is that we are test mandatory again with the um, increasing availability of testing as we're hopefully coming out of COVID soon. So this year, our freshman application for the Atlanta campus opened up on August 1st, and it is done through the Common App. The next big deadline that's coming up is our priority consideration deadline on November 15th. As long as you apply by November 15th, you will automatically be reviewed by um, or for scholarships and for the Honors College. Um, so if you're interested in either of those, you will definitely want to apply early. Additionally, you need to make sure that you have your required documentation, so your transcript and your test scores in by that deadline as well. 
So Georgia State does offer a range of scholarships. We have our merit-based scholarships that you are automatically reviewed for, the academic scholarships that you would have to submit a separate application for, and especially for any out-of-state students that are here tonight, our Campus Atlanta scholarship uh, will waive 50 or 100% of the out-of-state portion of tuition. So I definitely encourage everyone to apply by that November 15th deadline. I'm gonna be putting a link in the chat after this. So if you are interested in Georgia State, please follow that and register so we can stay in contact with you. Excellent, thank you. Uh, next up is SUNY Cortland. Hi everyone, thank you so much. Allow me one moment so that I can share my screen with you. Awesome. So I just want to, of course, thank you for joining us on this evening. I get the honor and privilege of talking to you all about SUNY Cortland. So SUNY Cortland is one of the 64 campuses that are uh, that encompass our State University of New York system. Um, my name is Kalia Banks. I am a senior admissions advisor and um, coming to you today, I get to share a student perspective as a alum of SUNY Cortland, but also um, a professional perspective perspective. So super happy to uh, be here with you. And I'll definitely share my information again towards uh, the end of my segment. So SUNY Cortland um, is definitely an amazing medium-sized school that is located upstate New York. Um, and I say an amazing medium-sized school is because we have that amazing balance to basically give students the opportunity to feel like they're on a college campus, but still be in an environment that is still uh, very comfortable and, and creates a lovely sense of community. And you can definitely feel that very family oriented and so forth. So we have a little over 6,000 students that includes our graduate students. And also um, every year we bring in a first year student class of a little under 1,300 students. Uh, the average class size is about 24. Um, and definitely that's gonna be in your major base courses. There are gonna be some classes, uh, lecture hall style that you do uh, have that kind of college-like uh, uh, lecture hall that you do see in movies. But of course, we're doing our best. Uh, we are fully in person and we're getting as back to normal as we can. Um, also, would like to share with you that we are towards the middle of the state um, and we're very close to a lot of well-known uh, different cities in New York. So that is, of course, Syracuse, um, Ithaca, Binghamton, and so forth. Uh, we are a geographically diverse campus. We have students from 33 different states and 54 different countries actually coming to Cortland and a lot of students from, of course, New York City and Long Island uh, that come up to Cortland because we're just in that perfect uh, medium. Um, how do students get to us? They might take a plane right into Syracuse and Cortland is only 30 minutes from there. So they'll either uh, get a ride or take a bus down or they'll, um, of course, get uh, the train up to Syracuse or uh, they'll, they'll drive. So um, students definitely can have a car on campus their first year. Um, and we did receive the number one for campus, number one ranking, excuse me, for campus safety um, in all of New York State. So our university police department does a great job. It's just making sure that students are comfortable, safe, and, and really enjoying a great environment on our campus. Um, let's talk about some of the majors that we offer. So we have a, a comprehensive offering academically, everything from um, African American studies to psychology to criminology. And we have the most extensive, extensive teacher certifications uh, that are offered in across the entire SUNY system. So uh, students definitely come to us for a various number of reasons. And that includes our physical education program, our health education program, and uh, all of the above. Uh, students can come into Cortland undecided or undeclared, and you will be in our pre-major uh, track where we basically help you navigate and find out what it is that you wanna do and what might be your best fit. We also have one of the very few uh, bachelors of fine arts in musical theater as well. Uh, the next thing that I'd like to share is some of our internship opportunities. These are the networks and uh, the different corporations that our students have not only interned, but also land a job 
uh, with. So from MTV to uh, the NFL, and speaking of the NFL, the New York Jets have used our facilities as a training camp uh, two times over. And uh, that just shows that not only are we a campus that has a wide range of academic offerings, but also a lot of athletic connections as well. What will students do on campus? Oh my gosh, we have a plethora of different clubs and organizations that fall under Greek life, that fall under politics, that fall under dance and culture and so forth. We have an amazing Office of Multicultural Life and Diversity that literally uh, does a great job promoting that diversity, equity, and inclusion for all students from all different backgrounds. And I'm definitely a testament uh, to that. So speaking of athletics, we are an NCAA Division III campus, and we do offer athletics within 25 uh, different uh, areas. So if you are a student athlete and you want to pursue that, you definitely want to follow the website. Our coaches do recruit uh, heavily, and uh, you find the sport that you're interested in, and you fill out a student athlete interest form. Um, now let's get to just one of our pride and joys, which is our student life center. Um, this is a multi-million dollar facility that has a number of different things that students will get involved in, all about physical wellness, social wellness, and, and so forth. So we have a double-decker fitness facility. We have um, our swimming pool. We have a jacuzzi, a rock climbing wall, a game room, um, a spin room, a yoga, and a wellness uh, room. We also have nine dining facilities on campus. Two of them are all you can eat, and the rest of them are are places that kind of change their menu day to day. Um, and you can literally find anything that you can imagine on our campus. Um, and this is just another look at our uh, Student Life Center and students literally love this space and um, it's, it's like no other. So definitely excited about that. If you're looking at the cost um, to go to SUNY Cortland, uh, please know that we have a number of merit-based scholarships and also a famous one for us is our Future New Yorker Award that um, our out-of-state students do get on an annual basis. Uh, the last thing that I want to share with you is, of course, my information. So if you have any questions along the way, uh, please know that uh, I'm happy to connect with you. I want to thank you for your time and have a great rest of the night. I'll pass it on to my next colleague. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, next up is Georgia College and State University. Awesome, thank you. Let me get my screen pulled up and we will go ahead and get started. All righty, so my name is Rachel Horn and I'm an admissions counselor with Georgia College located in the historic lakeside city of Milledgeville. We are the state's designated public liberal arts university. And a lot of you are probably thinking, okay, cool, 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 but what on earth is the liberal arts? So I'll start with what we're not. We are not politically affiliated in any which way, and we are not an art school, but we do have a phenomenal arts program. Liberal arts is not uh, a box that's going to define what majors we have, but rather how your experience is going to be shaped. So of course we do have a phenomenal arts program, but we're also home to the number one public nursing program in the state of Georgia, a business program that is accredited on the highest level possible worldwide, which actually puts us in the top 5% of business schools in the world. Um, we are one of two accredited music therapy programs in the state and we have a nationally ranked education program for all my future teachers out there. We also have many other programs like political science, biology, psychology, chemistry, criminal justice, exercise science, theater, communications, and that's truly just to name a few. We're focused on building essential skills like effective communication and critical and analytical thinking, collaboration, leadership, and creative problem solving. One way we accomplish this is with our GC Journeys program, which you see here on the screen. Through this program, you'll have the opportunity to complete at least five of these transformative experiences before you graduate, while the average college student in the US does less than three. So these top three that you see are automatically built into your time with us, regardless of your major. Then you'll have the opportunity to pick from any of these that you see below, um, at least two more, but a lot of our students will choose uh, probably three or four extra ones to complete. Our average student graduates with about six or seven of these total completed. Um, and so, 
some of these at the bottom might also already automatically be built in for you, just depending on your major. And so all of these experiences, they might challenge the way that you think, and they'll really show you just how much you're capable of. So being a medium-sized school, we have about 6,000 undergraduate students here on campus, which allows for 95% of our classes to be less than 50 students. And our average class size is actually about 25. So this means no intimidating lecture halls where you get swallowed up amongst 300 other students. Our classes are focused on engagement and discussion and creating an environment for you where you feel comfortable to ask questions and to voice your opinion and work cohesively with your peers and your professors. Now, don't worry, Bobcats aren't all work and no play. We have over 170 student organizations, over 90 intramural sport leagues, 27 fraternities and sororities, an awesome campus activities board, and a designated center on campus to help connect you to volunteering opportunities all throughout the area. And with all of our freshmen living on campus, you'll be walking distance or just a couple minutes drive away from all of these things. So we promise that you will never be bored. So if this sounds like a place you want to be a part of, let's talk about the application. So we're on Common App and Georgia Futures. Our application is going to include two essays that we provide the prompts for. And yes, we really do read them. We need your high school transcript, um, which means it needs to be official. So you'll need to talk to your high school counselor about this. We'll also need your official test scores, either ACT, SAT, or both. And you can just go ahead and send us all of your scores because we'll super score and we're only going to look at your highest scores. So if you send us your SAT and your ACT, because you don't know which one's higher, we'll decide which one's the highest. We know how to calculate that and we'll only look at that highest score. Um, additionally, you can send in um, some recommended items that we strongly, strongly recommend, and that is um, a resume and letters of recommendation. So just like the essays and every part of your application, we really do look at these items, and that's because we review holistically. So this means that we look at your application in its entirety, not just your GPA and test scores, though those definitely play an important piece. We consider the rigor that you've taken. We look for academic trends on your transcript. And when we read your essays, your resume, and your letters of recommendation, we're looking for what your application alone can't tell us. So what do you devote your time to outside of academics? What contributions have you made to your community or to your school? What leadership skills, talents, or ambitions do you have? So uh, now I mentioned that GPA and test scores, while they aren't the end all be all, they do still play a very important piece. So this scale shows you um, what our admitted freshmen from last year look like academically. So the GPA is from last year, the test scores are from the year before because of course we were test optional last year. So you'll see that this is a scale. So 50% of our students fell um, between a 3.34 and a 3.87 um, with test scores in between there as well. Well, so it's a nice wide average because of that holistic review. So let's catch up on dates real quick. Um, we've got our regular rolling admissions that goes until April 1st. Um, we also have our early action that's actually going on right now. That deadline is October 15th, okay, so this Friday. And then we also have an honors college with the application deadline also being April 1st. So here's my contact information for you all. I will also share this in the chat. Um, I may be your designated admissions counselor. So please reach out to me if you have any questions or want to schedule a tour to our beautiful campus. Thank you very much, Rachel. And finally, we have Hampshire College. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Emily Billadu. I use she, her pronouns, and I am an assistant director of admissions at Hampshire College. Uh, Hampshire is a small private liberal arts institution with around 700 students, and we are in the beautiful hills of Western Massachusetts in Amherst. 
I could go on for hours and hours about everything that makes Hampshire really special and unique, but I only have six minutes tonight. So I'm gonna focus on what makes Hampshire different from other small liberal arts colleges. Um, and I'm primarily gonna be focusing on our academics. So what I'm gonna chat with you about tonight includes our narrative evaluations, the five college consortium and our divisional system. Starting right off with narrative evaluation. So the first thing you should know about Hampshire is we do not use grades. Our students do not receive letter or number grades. Instead, they receive long format narrative evaluations from their professors at the end of every single course. Um, we find that these really allow for greater ownership of your learning. Uh, they tell you and anybody who's reading your transcript far more about yourself as a student, as a scholar than a letter or a number grade ever could. Uh, it also removes the competitiveness from the classroom and really encourages students to have a very self-reflective time and really be engaging with their work because they want the knowledge, not because they want an A. Next, we have the five college consortium. So Hampshire College, Smith College, Amherst College, Mount Holyoke College, and the University of Massachusetts Amherst all make up something called the five college consortium, which I like to think of as five colleges for the price of one. Because as a Hampshire student, you will have access to the classes, clubs, and resources of all of these schools for no extra fee. Uh, their student, Hampshire students take an average of six courses at these other schools during their time. Some will take none, some will take 13, uh, and a lot of students challenge themselves to a game of five college bingo where they try to take a course at each of the other schools before they graduate. Uh, there's also a free bus system to help students take advantage of this resource. I really love the consortium because it allows our students to have the small college feel and the close knit community that Hampshire provides while having access to this much larger network um, right at their fingertips, just a quick 10 minute bus ride away. Next, we have the divisional system. Uh, so the divisional system is the way in which every single student at Hampshire is able to design their own program of study. You are not gonna come to Hampshire and declare a major and be told what classes you have to take. Instead, you are going to be asked, what do you want to learn? What is going to be most useful to you? And what are you passionate about? And you'll work with a personal faculty advising committee to be able to design your program of study around answering those questions. Uh, every student's time at Hampshire culminates in a division three project, which is a large scale independent research project that's going to take a different form for every student. So we have students who do more traditional research papers or lab experiments, but we also have students who do gallery installations, write graphic novels, develop apps, uh, business plans, and everything in between. Uh, the divisional system really allows students to take ownership of your education. It allows you to focus on what it is that you are specifically passionate about. Uh, just to talk a bit about outcomes, Hampshire is ranked number eight among liberal arts colleges when measuring the impact of individuals who are connected with the college. You might recognize some faces in this collage of some of our past alums. 90% uh, of our alums report receiving either a job offer or starting grad school within six months of graduating. Uh, and two thirds go on to earn an advanced degree within 10 years. We are in the top 3% of students who, of colleges whose students go on to earn PhD. PhDs, and then one in four of our students uh, start their own business or nonprofit. Uh, so our alums are really out there. We always say they just keep popping up everywhere. So there's our outcomes. It's also worth mentioning that we have a gorgeous 800 acre campus, which is bordered by a 2000 acre state park. So there is lots of room for outdoor activities, which we have lots of programming for. Uh, we're also one of the most sustainable colleges in the country. We have solar fields that are capable of meeting 100% of our energy needs. We have a fully functioning on-campus farm, uh, two living buildings on our campus, and we are also on track to be carbon neutral by 2023, uh, which is right around the corner. Just to touch briefly on our application process, we are a Common App school, so everything can be done through the Common App and there is no application fee to apply. 
uh, like many of the other schools, we do a holistic read of your application. We really want to get to know you as a full person. So we're going to look at everything you send our way to try and fit that big picture together. The only thing we will not look at is we will not look at standardized test scores. Uh, since 2014, we have completely rejected these scores from our application process. Even if you send them our way, we will not look at them. Uh, I, for a while, we were the only school doing this. Now I believe there's 60 or so schools, which is amazing, uh, but we've been doing this for seven years. So we do not need these scores to accurately uh, figure out whether Hampshire is the right fit for you. Uh, I could go on and on further if you want to know more about our application process or if you want to hear about dorms, student life, anything, please reach out to me. My email is on there or you can head to admissions.hampshire.edu. Uh, thank you so much for your time and your attention and I will pass the virtual floor back to our facilitator. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. Um, so now before we wrap up this session, we have a couple minutes for some q and I'd invite our presenters to join me back on camera and uh, respond to this question. Uh, what is one piece of advice you would give uh, someone going through the college search process? And I'll ask our first presenter, Amanda, to start. Thanks, Matt. Um, I would just say to do exactly what you're doing now, attending sessions like this, doing as much research as possible, because there are thousands of colleges out there, not just in the US, but around the world. Um, and just because you haven't heard of a college doesn't mean that that college might not be the perfect school for you. So just to keep your um, horizons open and, and do a lot of research. I definitely agree with that. Um, keep an open mind. And I would also say, don't be afraid to reach out to us. I know it can sometimes feel a little intimidating, like I'm talking to someone in the mission, should I? What's appropriate to ask? We have truly heard every question under the sun. So it's not something to be ashamed of. If you ever have questions or concerns about any institution that you're interested in, definitely reach out to the admissions office. This is exactly what we're here to help you with. Uh, so the one thing I was thinking of is try to find a school, try to find a community that's going to fit you in multiple ways. Don't let any single aspect of a school completely dominate your decision making. My personal story about that is I basically came down to two schools that I was looking at. One was recruiting me for football, the other wasn't. Um, the one that wasn't recruiting me, I felt like was a better fit in most ways. I ended up going there, walking onto the football team. Right before the first game, I injured my back and never played again. So if I'd gone to the other school just for football, I probably would have been miserable and transferred. So go somewhere that's going to fit you in as many ways as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is your process, right? So it is all about what you want, what you desire. And we know that our parents and guardians can have a definite uh, heavy influence, but just remember that wherever you are, you have to feel at peace. You have to feel at home. And also you're investing your time, your money, your energy, and so many other things into wherever you are. So making sure that it is the place for you, um, visiting, reaching out. We love to hear from you. We're not scary. Our goal is to admit you and to get you at our campus and that you're happy there. So just know, I'll always remember that. And my advice is a little less profound, but still pretty helpful. Um, something that I really found helped me is go ahead and have a whole separate calendar where you keep track of all of the schools that you're interested in, any important dates that they have, whether it's application deadlines, scholarship deadlines, open house events, um, anything like that. Keep track of it because you don't want to miss any opportunities, especially with scholarships, because a lot of scholarship deadlines are earlier than students think, and you don't want to miss that opportunity, right? You need to make sure that all your hard work, you literally get paid for it when it comes to college. So that is my advice. So many great pieces of advice. Um, I would, at the risk of sounding cliche, I think the best piece of advice I ever received was to find a way to have fun with this process. I know it is a stressful time. I know you are coming off of a couple really challenging years as students. But when else are you going to get to write an essay where you just get to brag about how awesome you are? When else are you going to get to really find a place that's going to fit you so well? Uh, so even through all of the stress and the hard work, find sparks of joy in, in this whole process and really just enjoy your senior year. 
Excellent. Thank you all so much. Uh, so that brings us to the end of this session. I want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you to our presenters. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a quick survey, and we do appreciate your feedback. We encourage you to check the schedule and sign up for more sessions, and you'll be able to find a recording of this session as well as others at strivescan.com probe. So thank you all so much and have a great rest of your day.